just because you settled doesn't mean I will neither does it mean you should try but if you try it means you're gonna persecute me you're gonna make yourself Hamas slipping into my kibbutz and putting a bullet in my baby's brain understand it doesn't matter what you do I will always stand with the Lord if God be God serve God he is God why would I want anything else he is not a Baal is not God I will never stand with Baal and sisters here in lies they cause you to sever your families I don't know what under heaven makes you believe this stuff perpetually in any endearing form when they decimate your families like this look at what ancestors did to my whole family we are no longer united as we used to be it has taken away peace from households it's like the Grinch that stole Christmas there's no longer celebrations got Christmas with family it has inspired an elephant in a the room there is awkwardness all over the show in the family that's what this Grinch known as ancestors that steals Christmas does not only do these ancestors sever ties with people that are Christian from you not only that but they also cause you to sin against God through your ancestors ancestors of which nobody even understands in these streets why they're not righteous if at all it's a God it should be holy by mere virtue of being a God it ought be holy unless of course it's a small G God why are your gods not holy if your gods are not holy how can you trust them how can you trust them to not hurt you since you are using them to hurt other people Nina any twelle ngamba zlozi how are you going to twala with zlozis how are you going to do that and still be safe and still feels feel safe your stuff is dark it's dingy it is why when you consult la masangoma you go into deep dingy dark huts environments that smell really badly you would never ever want to be in that room all day long you just go there as a matter of necessity because you want to bewitch your friend and then you get out of there hoping never to have your clothing your garments stained even with the stench of that room mm an environment like that when you are perpetually perusing it frequenting it how do you anticipate that upon perishing that you're going to be safe you reap what you sow whatever it is that you lived you can anticipate you will ultimately experience in eternity experience in eternity since ubungoma nobuzozi and nama ancestors that whole practice is so dark can you then fathom yourself for eternity being inside the premises of a sangoma they're dingy they're dark there's nothing seemly about them even the sangomas themselves don't like being in there so if at all you are perpetually in an environment like that and you are guaranteed an eternity like that would you not want to turn away from it that you might be in an environment eskun sleep on a bed that is not you know whatever it is that happens in that environment all of these things that you do those rituals the drinking of blood goodness gracious the fear factor that you're always engaged in as ancestral worship worshipers you are always in fear factor because you're always eating funny things that under normal circumstances unless you are demon possessed you would not eat you're eating slugs you're drinking blood you're doing all different kinds of weird things because they're not a fear factor that's what's good yeah who in the world wants to eat bugs for the rest of their days unless of course they're listening to klaus schwab who will tell them eat the bugs tell them eat the bugs i guess you're fulfilling the world economic forums desires at this point that you're busy eating bugs out in these streets for demonic power and of course you don't even think it's demonic that's just the issue that's the, that's a sad and unfortunate thing you don't imagine it as demons and given that you don't think that these things are demons you then go on right ahead and continue to herald and praise things that are walking in a demonic fashion what do demons do they steal they kill they destroy your entities enable you to steal kill and destroy other people's lives how therefore can you ever feel safe in their hands you cannot continue to practice the stuff and not be scared that you're going to end up wherever the stuff comes from because it cannot come from any good place it is dark clearly so in a way that is observable and yet you're continuing in that fashion you reap what you sow if you're busy practicing you guys know it's dark it's dingy you're always grunting you're always summoning some spirits there is no peace in it but chaos it's cantankerous and on top of that there are so many alternative roots in it in that there is no one single truth one single way and one single life there it's just a, a myriad of doctrines that you are all trying to understand there is no one single book that is the book of your religion there is no religious text that is enabling you along to basically follow to the letter that you might honor your ancestors and you're busy at your mixing him them with Jesus while well, God is a jealous God do you understand the very same thing that Oprah was actually lamenting about that she doesn't want a jealous God yeah well it's okay fine go and grab a God that is happy to share you with a million people in an orgy but our God is jealous for us do you understand that's what's good and so if at all you're gonna go and worship any other God you have not chosen him you cannot choose two masters you will either 
love the one and hate the other so if you are going to choose Jesus and ancestors you are choosing ancestors is that basic and if at all your ancestors freak you out to a point of making you want to run to Christ you should run to him and turn away from that stuff period but if you don't run to him and turn away from that stuff you're mocking him do not be deceived God is not mocked whatsoever a man soweth so too shall he reap if you sow to the flesh you will reap corruption if you sow to your to the spirit you will reap eternal life so you cannot mock God by practicing things that are going to give you instant gratification and then turning back to him because you notice they're dark a lot of these professing Christians choose to stick with Jesus because of the fact that there is light in Christ but it is um but they stay with the darkness but the reason why they stay with the darkness is because like again again like I said um instant gratification it is about getting your needs without having to walk in the fruit of the Holy Spirit of patience and long suffering you don't want to have to wait you don't want to have to be patient and so you go and you grab something real quick like instant gratification and then go back to Christ because you want to enter God's heaven having however practiced the devil's witchcraft you cannot have both the bible is clear no servant can turf serve two masters i've been standing with the one true god for years and all of these randos that is that rejected christ and turned their way aside to myths and all these other strange things now they want to come and gravitate to my life but for nobuya and jefela making like velcro all up in my grill they want to come and make like black jacks on my woolen jersey and gotcha i've been walking in a bush and i'm like i don't want you because you don't even want to admit what you did it's not that you want me or what is this it's not that you want me or christ you just want to be able to have a source of light in your dark life but without embracing the light you're gonna have to repent you're gonna have to take your lives away from the darkness altogether you're gonna have to walk away from filth do you understand your horrid torturous lives that you've been living in the darkness that has caused you to have sleepless nights and be disquieted and literally end up with garabo as an elephant in the damn room if that's the life that you're living Mm. you cannot then upon being exhausted with how inebriating it is with darkness then just sit around and perch near the light but never really truly be in the light you cannot hover around the light without en en enduring yourself through a torturous eternity above even everybody else that is in hell why because the closer to the light you were the greater you are going to be afflicted he who has been given much loves much but he who was closest to the light will also be beaten with many blows in other words the closer you were to the light of christ yet never repented the more torturous your eternity is going to be so it is these professing christians that are in an especially diabolical uh, well, what is this um poignant amount of of danger because of their diabolical lives you do not get to mix the two things because on that day who in the world under heaven is god going to choose between before be uh, choose between you and Karabo? who is god going to choose between you and me who who so my family, like right now, I am literally out of my mind, freaking out, do you understand? Over my mom's eternal state. Like, she is literally too old for this rubbish. Too old. Today, she invited me to Mosebe Etsy. And for me, it's like, woman, like, well, whatever, whatever happened to the conversation we had in 2011 when I had just gotten born again? Whatever happened to the email I sent your brother after swearing at Jesus using a small J for his name? Whatever happened? to the gossiping, the grapevine information that was traveling through back in the day. After getting born again with y'all calling me a member of a cult, you do remember I've always been fervent, right? Uh, every so often when you walk up and down in this jarad, that you hear me talking about Jesus. Woman, you know that I am consecrated. You know I'm holding on to God. Every so often I don't eat muesli in the mornings. Why? Because I'm fasting. Like I am literally a whole religious being walking in the midst of you. And you know what that religion is, it's Christianity. I am a Jesus Christ onlyist. I hate ancestors. I cannot stand all of the stuff that you mix with us i have been rapping on the rooftops about that we have had arguments in the past where it is that i used fenugreek in my hair i used rosemary in my hair I, and i put stuff in my drink like turmeric mixing all different kinds of herbs for health purposes and you accused me of being a sangoma in the making because i was using herbs the way that they like mixing up herbs that's what she said to me and i yelled at her and i told her how dare you offend me so violently creation groans to see the sons of god revealed so fenugreek and rosemary and sage and uh what is this um turmeric and uh whatever it is that you might use that as a natural herb is groaning because you are busy using things that god gave for medicinal purposes things that god gave for hair boosting properties things that god gave for health purposes in the body of a human being anti-inflammatory benefits of the things of the earth you are now using them to worship demons you are the ones that went and grabbed fenugreek and made it and made it basically subjugated to the tyranny of being used in a demonic ritual so i am using fenugreek as i am honoring the lord and thanking him 
him for bringing a herb that grows hair and clears skin but you are accusing me of basically you know not walking in my god ordained career as he sung him. I was so upset, I was so offended, out of my mind. Mara, that's the thing. I'm dealing with Mfazi that does not know God. No, having ears, she does not hear. Having eyes, she does not see. They don't comprehend God as they ought. They are blind guides leading one another into the abyss. They're going to hell as a conglomerate. Bako bane, gao fel. Afflicting the body of Christ with their offensive statements. I, 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 I have never felt more offended by anybody uh, other than what my mom said that day when I was busy making my drinks that I use for health purposes based on the uh, basically studies uh, as to what are the men, uh, health benefits of such and such things as these. And then she tells me that because I like mixing up the car. I was extremely offended to a point of being emotional. Like I was, it's just so disgusting to me, this stuff. Not only that, it was a flagrant disregard of my constitutional right to religion. It was a disregard of the fact that I gave my life to Jesus and I worship him and him only. Like they have deliberately decided to ignore my faith. They have deliberately decided to ignore that I am a Christian and the real deal. I am standing with Christ only and so if I'm using fenugreek, it's only because I found out it can grow hair. And God has therefore given me a seed from heaven to grow hair. Creation, it is written in God's word, groans to see us revealed. Because it is subjected, subjected to the tyranny of that. Black cats are subjugated to the tyranny of being used by witches. So, like all different kinds of things, like boroto, whatever you can find. Crystals, crystals are like stones of the earth that are used for demonic purposes. Like, there are so many things that I can think of in creation that have been subjugated to the tyranny of human beings using them for evil purposes. So when you see somebody basically, you know, wearing a ring that is adorned with crystals just for the sake of the beauty of it, when you accuse them of being a witch, that's basically a world that has gone on right ahead and grabbed stones, used them for the devil, and made everybody that's using them for any other purpose, innocuous purposes, basically be subjugated to the tyranny of that devil worship. It is why creation groans to see us revealed, because when we get revealed, finally, crystals are going to be used just as ornaments to decorate your fridge, just as ornaments to put on a nose ring, just as ornaments to put on a ring, just as ornaments to put on an Alice band and hair, because that's all that it's supposed to be used for. It's something to decorate a glass. Something to, you know, uh, decorate the, the lining of a kitchen counter. It will finally be used for the purposes for which it was intended by God. And not sin. The worship of money, of gold, of silver, of all these things. People grab these things and they use them for the devil. The cutting up of animals in sacrificing them over to false gods. You are killing animals that would not have anything to do with your devil worship. In faith, in light, sorry, in order to honor entities that these animals in and of themselves agree justly deserve their eternal condemnation you're killing a cow not because it's food to eat and that's what it is that god will have us do but you're killing it because you are literally trying to have some ancestor embrace that otherwise known as a demon if a person has said they're christian and they have also put down a manifesto of sorts all up in your grill saying going forward this is life so please don't invite me to such events. And then you watch a person suffer for years and then you think maybe now she's been buttered up. And then you invite them to Msebets. My mother this morning made me lose appetite for food and also made me lose appetite for my for consumption of my own content. Made me feel like I'm wasting time. When she suddenly just said to me, Musadi, I sat you down years ago and I told you I don't do that. Um, Sebezi, those of you who don't understand, is a, um, some kind of a, a ritual event where it is that black people go to basically petition ancestors for anything. It Family members, like in my family, the last um, Sebezi I ever went to was one way something like three grandmothers died in one year and they were like, oh, there's too much death in the family. So we got to clean stuff up. And so they did a um, Sebezi where they prayed to ancestors and they were like please there's too much death in the family block it there's too much death in the family block it first of all it was so i didn't even understand what the fuss was but anyway whatever that msebenzi happened when i think i could have been like a teenager yeah i was like a teenager that was the last msebenzi i ever went to ever since then there's never been msebenzi at home 
there's never been a Mosebezi Gohai, but I've been to enough of them to understand what goes on there. They, they slaughter either chickens or cows or goats or sheep, and they talk to dead people. Necromancy all up in your grill. Yeah. And then they go on right ahead to celebrate and drink and be merry afterwards. That's Omsebenzi. We don't do Misebenzi as Christians. Mosebezi. Ke Mosebezi. Waba ancestors. How are you gonna go invite a Christian to Omsebenzi? It's like asking me to partake in the ceremony of the prophets of Baal. That's the thing. When she asked me that, I was like, you know, I creased my forehead and I was like, of course not. She's like, I was like, of course not. Yes, guys, like, I just, I don't understand my family. I thought she would leave it at that. I imagine she would leave it at that. After telling her, of course, I'm not going to Umsebenzi, Gotladi. And then when I came back in the house again, she was talking to my little sister, telling her to get ready for the same Msebenzi. And she's like, I'm doing this Msebenzi. I'm the one that organized it. And I'm doing it for you guys. You guys of which being my siblings and I. And I was like, I'm not going to Tladi. First of all, Tladi is the household of that menacing beastly female that used to be my best friend that bewitched everything out of my life and recently i had a dream of her pouring sand black sand on top of my save our souls otherwise known as my ministry you want me in your sala while you do a demonic ritual and so mock my god while some witch that recently bewitched my content on youtube smiles at me with a side smile on some she finally embraced our gods the gods of which ripped the carpet from underneath your cousin so badly that she couldn't work she could not get a baby she could not do anything and you still think you're safe in their hands the the gods that helped people destroy my life for real i'm not under any spells i am a monument do you understand an example to witches and in due season, the Lord will give me breakthrough or rapture me. Angas. But in the run up to, Kitlo Telwa, Kibal Lotsan, Baling Pizika di Ancestor, Banza Bali Piziba Sahadi Nam, Dinama of which they are complaining, Gomu Dimon or Bona Bara sacrifices and Tweba Yetza, Madimonia Bon, Babis in Sabara Sahala Ona. Eh. All of these randos with all of their stupid rituals, holding on to a God that cannot hear, holding on to a God that cannot see, that cannot talk literally cutting up animals for no other reason than the fact that they're trying to dishonor the god that created them the god that raises the sun every day and sets it the god that makes sure that rain is not going to even land on your bry stand while you are busy cooking meat as sacrificed to idols the way that he's got so much grace over you yeah you are expecting me to stand and sit around all awkward after losing everything while they do um sebenzi for mina angi dingi minusuzo usizo Luga Satan. I don't need help from the devil to get a job. Hi, Ban. Bona baba talo eza ritual le fonna. Ho re ke tlo embrace nyoka ba yetsa nka o fela tsa mayang. If you want to go and bewitch the planet on my behalf, Hamban. If you want to go and speak to dead people necromancy on my behalf, Hamban. But understand look ba I didn't send you. Langutla. If anything I warned you. Ho you are walking in idolatry mudimo le chesa with fire and brimstone jaga ga tshise se tsoro mo le gomora. I am not a part of these rituals and I will make it clear on the rooftops. You can do a ritual in my name as much as you want. Guess who else is a child of God in whose name rituals are always done day and night? Mary. Wadi Catholic. Eh. She's always got a rosary like there's a rosary. Hail Mary. Prayed in her name. When she is a saint of the living God. Disinterested that people should worship anyone other than Christ. There is no name under heaven by which men must be saved other than the name of Jesus. But Mary is constantly having Um Sebenzi done in her name. Mary is always having Um Sebenzi done in her name. Prop. Praying the Hail Mary. The woman is in heaven. She hates Catholicism and what it's doing. It's idolatry. But what can she do? That's what under heaven is going on. Kausan, go It's like praying the rosary. Do you? I'm burning a rosary. That's not gonna do anything. Yield no fruit. Yeah. Little rasa di tsebetsa modimo le mosirisa meno ka nnontso le bise le rapela di thapela tsa saetseng sense in the name of bazalwan literally a christian that has denied your ancestors rejected them vehemently thrown them away burned the artifacts 
and you're busy sending ikamalake, ikamalake elinte in the face of God since I've been propitiated for by the Lord to amadozi that don't have ears to hear, neither eyes to see, nobody they're dead, they're just statues and you are out here talking to them, you are talking to something in the ground, for real, nyembel, it's a cadaver, it's like literally got worms crawling in it, eh, God is the God of the living and not of the dead, make no mistake, amadozi eno ashonile, these are dead people, worms in their body, some of them are so finished up that there's no more worms anymore, they're just skeletons in Jefel, skeletons in the ground, that's all there is, <laughs> and you're taking Garabo to skeleton? Got it? Like Masapo, Marapo. Do you know when my grandmother died? I was 16, so that would be 2000. The year 1999 slash 2000. Now 2000, 2000, 2001. It was 2000. Because she passed away the year before my sister was born. And she was born, my little sister, in 2001. My, my grandmother died in the year 2000. It's 2023. So, I mean, that's like 23 years ago. Those of you who are pathologists or, um, what do you call this, coroners or morticians, you know, grave exhumers, you tell me, what under heaven does a 23-year-old corpse look like? My grandmother was quite fat. So it probably took a minute for her flesh to completely get, like, you know, gnawed away at. So take that into consideration. What would my grandmother be looking like today if at all her corpse were exhumed from the ground? I don't really care. Bottom line is, that's what I'm being dedicated to. My dad died, like, was it last year or the year before last? So his cadaver is likely skin and bones, but there's probably some skin still on him. Yeah. Looking real nasty. And I'm being like, you know, sacrificed to that. Mind you as well, those same ancestors, some of them the character, left so much to be desired. I had an ancient relative that was a whole child molester. Mm. Uh, my dad was an alcoholic. Yeah. Uh, my grandmother, albeit having passed away as a saint, was very unfair to some one of her children. Uh, so she was one of those partial parents. And I also experienced that partiality um, where it is that I saw her mistreat some other one child that was living with us in this in her house and she mistreated her because she was not born of her own children. So she was one of those grandmothers from hell if you are not the right child. Mm. So people with such character flaws, you are worshipping them? For real? Even if they were born again, bottom line is they still had flaws. They were human beings, mere mortals, and you're worshipping them. The worst for me are those of y'all who have like uncles that were gangsters, rapists, murderers, and you are just asking that random for anything at all. If there is no justice at the end of a murderer's life that never gave their life to Christ, why under heaven do you think there is hope for you? In a world where there is nobody that corrects the unequal skills, the, 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 the imbalanced state of everything, what, what hope is there for you? What hope is there for you? If you can't get justice in this life, then you better at least be grateful that you will get it ultimately in eternity. So, manje, when a, a gangster that raped your child and killed your husband is like out here literally after getting apprehended by the police from that same terror attack on you. When they die and then become a freaking ancestor. When they die and then they are in a position to help people on earth. Where is justice? Plus what can they possibly do as an ancestor that died like that? Like the guys in, in Bahamas that passed away while busy shooting people in the kibbutz. That passed away after having raped women. I mean goodness like when they get to eternity and then they just get like robed with like kingship with honor with royalty with priesthood they just get robed with with godhood what the heck like guys come on like you, you like think when a member of hamas passes away and he gets made a god for real for real because that's that's the whole theory with ancestral worship in so far as it is in your lineage it's an ancestor of yours and can therefore be in a position to answer your prayers so how do you account for serial murderers how do you account for them guys please like i'd like to know your your doctrines are messed up your gods are unholy it is no wonder through them that you are doing all these rituals to destroy people's lives you are shattering entire futures using your evil gods it is appointed unto man to die once and thereafter is the judgment so there are no ancestors to be worshipped however there are demons acting as them and you are running 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 with them and because they make you uneasy and antsy you are also keeping jesus as a side piece you're keeping Jesus as like an, you know, a little bit of a, uh, an accessory. Something in your back pocket just in case, you know. Like really, you would much rather go to Jesus' heaven than the ancestors' uh, eternal, ab like a boat.
I don't know how people are able to mix ex and ancestral worship no Christianity. The, the sad thing about ancestral worship is that it's very showy. It's ostentatious. It's got like fireworks displays for all of those who, who walk in it. And so because it's like this whole like, you know, 4th of July event, people are inclined to roll around in it. Given the signs and wonders that it produces, it not only gives you instant gratification type results, but it also shows you signs and wonders. Like I told you with that cousin of mine telling me about some animal lying upside down, therefore predicting her pregnancy. They like to see these showy signs and therefore believe that they obviously cannot be a god because look at Garabo's life, but I saw an animal laid down in a particular position proving that I'm pregnant and so therefore uh, her god is not really the thing. Ask yourself if virtue does not matter, if piety is irrelevant, if at all truth does not matter. What are we? What, what, what do we have, like, guys? What do we have? If truth does not matter, in a ling, what, what do we have? In Kalusete, please. If truth does not matter, if innocence does not matter, never mind innocence, but the right standing. If it does not matter, what is going on? What's left? If goodness does not matter, what do we have to live for? If a person that is right. If there is no honor accrued to them above the wrong person, what do we have left? If there is no justice, what's the point? If good cannot triumph over evil, what's the point? If murder, violence can be proliferated, unfettered, what is the point? Criminals celebrate when they get acquitted in court because evidence was, you know, was inconsequential was consequential. Sorry. Criminals rejoice when they get set free on a technicality in court that was supposed to spend life in prison. Yeah, they rejoice. Do you understand what I'm saying? They celebrate when they were supposed to go to prison, but somebody misplaced evidence or they tampered with it. But when they rejoice and they get away with that murder, what happens to that society? The widow is perpetually grieved with no justice. The children left orphaned are grieved without justice. The community remains terrorized by the presence of this guy in the streets. That's what happens when a wicked man is acquitted on just a technicality and witchcraft is a technicality. Wickedness that is left to thrive is that technicality. And so if goodness does not matter anymore, if the innocent person in the room is no longer awarded favor, when you have made evil good and good evil, when you have flipped an ecosystem upside down, what's the point? What's the point? No, please explain to me, what do we have left? Well, let me tell you something about witches. They pride themselves on getting away with stuff because of the fact that their thing is anonymous and people tend to call their victims crazy. They like criminals let go on a technicality because people cannot find the evidence. And if they thrive and walk up and down in these streets with no justice being served to their victims, what's the point? of anything. What is the point? Can't nobody look forward to tomorrow. But that's the thing about a world that is upside down, calling good evil and evil good. That's the thing about praising Hamas after doing what they did in Israel. That's the thing about leaving Garabo in shambles. She gets asked by witches if she wants to go and attend a demonic ritual. Proper. You know, me being asked if I want to go to Msebezi is like asking a vegan if they want to go to carnivore for Christmas lunch. Carnivore, I mean, then the name is self-explanatory. Is a restaurant in South Africa in Maldus Drift of Johannesburg that sells basically meat from the wild. So you go to carnivore and you can have elephant meat, you can have crocodile meat, you can have lion meat, you can like yeah. They basically cook all different kinds of weird animals there. That's carnivore. Mm. And I just got asked as a proverbial vegan to go and spend Christmas lunch at carnival i mean it's patronizing how would you feel as a vegan asked if you want to go have lunch at carnival you would probably say to the person but you know i'm vegan yo i'm plant-based like why not take me to rather a, a restaurant called herbivore like is there no restaurant called herbivore that that i can stack and hang out in and taste all different kinds of plants on the earth but like when you take me to carnival as a vegan you are literally insulting my decision in life you're disrespecting it you're offending it i was asked as a vegan to go eat dinner at carnival and people think that such things are going to remain acceptable in the sight of a holy god i'm a christian i made it clear who i am i live in a country that gives me freedom of religion and yet i'm being invited to demonic rituals i'm being asked to go mina and cut up an animal in the name of my grandmother my dad and some other deadbeat like molest child molesting grandfather that i just like you know must ignore their character flaws and my god in order to cause them to give me a job that I have struggled to get for a decade. Yeah. 
Look at me being a vegan, e eating elephant meat. Never mind chicken. That's what's going on. Why will you not respect people's religions? But that's the thing is 2023, no one respects anyone. So I mean, with this level of insanity, with your increase in lawlessness that's causing the love of many to grow cold, I guess we're gonna go home then, right? We'll just go home. We'll just go home. Like, let us go home. May the Lord collect the church already, since nobody has any regard for him. People are looking at my life and they imagine that because I appear to be abandoned by God, there therefore must be no God. Enough for you to go and invite a vegan to a meat-eating expedition. I'm not a vegan. It's an example. My Christianity, however, is like veganism. And carnivores, and they're eating food at carnival, is like partaking in a satanic ritual. Gemuzalwani, Banabaika, will never ever attend a satanic ritual. Because Nkhonwateng, it just, you know, it has called in a favor. Please, just for me. Just for me. So, Gaosani, they're gonna have Msebezi, that is my mom. She's the one that's hosting this msebenzi. They're currently cooking it up a storm. My mom is probably gonna bring back some of that food and I will not touch it. It will get emptied out of the refrigerator. Having rotten, do you understand? Because I will know for a fact that it's food sacrificed to idols. It's one thing to eat halal food and a waste to yourself that it's halal. On that day, your conscience is clear. But when you go and you guzzle halal food knowing, knowing it's halal, you're eating food sacrificed to idols and your conscience is not clear. So you sin. Whatever my mom is gonna be bring, bringing from that place, whatever meat that they will have prayed over, whatever chicken, I will not touch it. Just to make my statement clear. I will eat my muesli, I will have a banana and an apple. I will make rice and chicken myself and I will ignore that food until it gets thrown out or they will eat it. Just to basically solidify my firm stand on Christ. And I happy over and above it to literally do msebetsi what thing in my name. Get get letters out on msebetsi on how we tell lang exactly. What are you doing this msebetsi because your daughters are, are divided? They appear separated from each other. Honey, you need to understand the reason why we don't even have a relationship with each other is because you did not instill that value in them. It has nothing to do with ancestors that are upset. My older sister made a decision to go and bewitch the living delights out of my whole future. My little sister disrespects the living crap out of me because you taught her to disrespect me thanks to having lost a job and thanks to you disregarding my faith, my Jesus. That's why there's no camaraderie between us. You made the little one a child soldier and the old one made a decision to basically lay waste her own younger sister's future. So if your kids are not getting along, honey, look within. Don't look at a dead woman that's been in the grave for 23 years. That ain't gonna do jack for you. Are you looking at the fact that nothing is working out for your children? Whoa, uh, that's just the thing. The prayers of the wicked are an abomination to Emmanuel. And you reap what you sow. So if you're going to sow witchcraft, understand that God is going to uproot structures out of your life. So if you lose a house, if you lose a child, what is this, a car? If you lose a job, it's because of your irresponsibility. Look within. Stop having an external locus of control. Look within. Investigate the root cause of why your family fell apart. It has nothing to do with ancestors being unhappy with you. It has everything to do with your moral turpitude. You're evil. You're the one that messed up your whole family. You're the one that threw it into the dogs. Genius. You took beautiful genius donors. Like intellectual geniuses. And you just threw them in a burning fire. You grabbed a beautiful daughter and insisted on putting a spell on her to never get married. And so you took away from yourself, Ditlokhul. You took your own grandchildren away. You took your own grandson away. And the glory of Amalobola, Akichelwa, Indotagazi, Entlegapi. You took away your own daughter's career. And so therefore the glory of the boast of your daughter's success. So no, I mean, what is with the ancestors? What are they gonna do for your indiscretions? You messed up. You fixed your nonsense. Confess the nonsense you have done. And if you don't wanna do that, do not expect me to participate in some mutinous, flagrantly blasphemous activity where I'm going to have to sit in the same chair as my mortal enemy that recently just poured sand, black sand on my save our souls. The devil worshiping daughter of the uncle whose home it is. I got praying to some satanic god while I stand opposite some cousin I can't stand. She is dirty like the scum underneath my feet. She is wicked and she won't stop Garikar where I'm concerned. And you expect me to sit amidst, amidst those people. I'm man, Nina. Go and worship Nina, your satan god. Mtaten. Grab your little devil and run with him. Parade him in the streets like the, 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 the parade in Brazil. You know how it is that they went and they mocked Christ by parading a devil dragging Jesus. All bloody, carrying a cross. Yeah. In a carnival in Brazil. 
Yeah, that's what my family are about to do tomorrow. Go and take a Christian and drag her name through the mud at a satanic ritual where they're trying to insist that my life fell apart because ancestors are not happy with me. Instead of realizing that my life is like this because you abandoned me as a mother. You neglected me. You betrayed me. You insisted I don't get married. And you as a sister wanted me to be nothing but a pretty face. And so you bewitched my prospects of a future. And then you caused my baby sister to disrespect me and treat me like I'm trash. So I'm sorry, no. Like literally, I'm, I'm, like, I'm freaking good. That go, that like take your little devil. Go on right ahead and pray the rosary. That's what they're doing. When you go and you, in idolatry, try to like exalt a saint. You're my, you might as well be a Catholic. Go and pray the rosary, do you? But as for me, I've already made my stand clear that this is blasphemy. This is an abomination in the sight of God. I will have nothing to do with it. In the name of Usataniwenu. In the name of Umfazi that's been dead literally the age of a child. Uh, the age of a Gen Z. Mm. I go and continue to celebrate some child molesting old man. Mm. Hamban and pray your rosary. Hail Mary, nya nya. Hail Mary, nya nya. Hail Mary, nya nya. Do you? But as for Mary, we will serve the Lord. As for Mary and I, we will serve the Lord, like proper. Go on, do your idol worship where you will worship a saint. But as for Mary and I, we will serve the Lord. It's like what the occult did with the name of Solomon. You know how Solomon is used in so many satanic rituals because of his affiliations with all of these foreign pagan wives. And now the name of Solomon in occult circles is basically used as somebody who apostatized from God and can be used in satanic rituals to strengthen themselves. A lot of Masonic um, temples are built on Solomon, the Solomon of the Bible. Solomon was a godly man, the wisest one. He made a mistake at the end of the, his life and God judged him in this physical world for it. Because of his many wives, he was led astray. But I believe Solomon is in heaven. So when human beings grab the mistakes of saints or even the non-mistakes of saints and then they decide to go and make them gods, literally the invisible qualities of God are all over creation. You have the story of Solomon in the Bible to read from, to understand how in the world it is that he ended up falling um, short where God is concerned. But God would never ever abandon David, neither his household. So Solomon is not in hell. That's what you must understand. Yeah, he made mistakes just like Samson is not in hell but he made mistakes at the towards the end of his life with delilah the the fornications the sexual sin but we know that samson is not in hell so if you're gonna go on right ahead and create a demonic occult organization out of samson out of samson's sins with delilah with delilah if you're gonna make a, 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 an occultic demonic organization out of solomon's sins against god with his foreign pagan wives you are without excuse because you have got the invisible qualities of god all over creation to explain to you first of all the bible tells you what really happened with solomon and secondly you have a responsibility to look at god yourself god's sovereignty is next to man's responsibility so you cannot thanks to your conscience just run with whatever rubbish you want to do because samson sinned with delilah because solomon sinned with many wives you cannot grab whatever random rubbish you want to do i once had a man that was literally afflicting the living daylights out of my virtue telling me that Ugh, i gotta forgive him i'm a beautiful woman at the end of the day david was also given mercy for his sin with bathsheba he literally went on right ahead and after like i was telling him you're, you're trying to stumble me some white guy i was like you're trying to stumble me don't continue in this fashion because you're not even coming forward to me with the truth as to whether or not you're a married man or whatever and you keep on talking to me and I don't want to be stumbled. And then he went on right ahead and literally laughed it off and said, Ah, you can't blame me, you're a beautiful woman. At the end of the day, you know, David was also a sinner saved by grace. So he was basically saying that I can't help myself for having lust over a woman that is not my wife from a distance and wanting to bring her into my household. Because to me, you are Bathsheba and I am David. David had to be snapped out of insanity concerning his sin, Bathsheba, by Nathan, by the prophet Nathan. Do you understand? He had to be snapped out of it. He was not just walking in that presumptuous sin in the middle of it, aware that he's a hurting God, but smiling and schmucking, trusting that, ah, oh, the promise of God is here to cater to me. The Lord said he will never ever take his Holy Spirit from me. The Lord said that he will never take his throne away from me, that He will, his promise rests on me forever. David did not just run with that. He had to be snapped out of his pomp, his arrogance. And once he was snapped out of it, he bled, he cried. And he wrote Psalm 51. So when you are basically like trophying yourself with Psalm 51, when you flirt as a married man with a single woman, 
trusting that God is going to do to you what he did with David. You are walking in a presumptuous sin. You're not being snapped out of stuff. You are walking in it, literally, presumptively so, telling yourself that, I mean, girl, like, God forgave David. That that's exactly, like, people like those are going to find themselves in their numbers in hellfire, where it is that a man that is married will be flirting with a single woman in the office. Uh, t- telling himself he's a Christian, maybe even hiding his wedding ring, and then going on right ahead to find comfort in Psalm 51. Find comfort in the story of David and Bathsheba, saying that, look, even Christian men, even men after God's own heart, stumble with women sometimes. I'm sorry, you literally do not get to use that. You don't get to use that. God is not mocked. That's the world we're living in. So people who go on right ahead and sin in the name of saints are like men who proclaim the name of David when they have cheated on their wives. Men who proclaim the name of Solomon when they are partaking in the occult. Men who proclaim in the name of Solomon when they are busy taking 10,000 wives. Men who proclaim the name of, uh, what is this, um, Mary when they are worshipping false gods. Because, I mean, I guess the Catholic Church is, is doing it. People who go on right ahead and do all the things that God said don't do them. And tell themselves that, oh, I can find a Bible character that was walking in this floor. And so I'll be okay. Like these polygamous beasts that are trying to marry me are literally using polygamous men in the scriptures like David, like Solomon to justify trying to take me as a wife except David married all those wives he didn't even divorce one yeah and um, you are divorced from two women you've put them away and so put me in a position to commit adultery and I will certainly never agree to have sister wives I will certainly never agree to be with a man that has two wives and I'm just being taken as a third one that is your loophole do you but it's not what I ask for in prayer but men who are divorced are thoroughly trying to look at Bible characters like David to justify taking three four five wives after those divorces like Marcus Rogers can't deal like a whole bunch of compromise like all over the show continue to use the name of dead saints and even living ones in the name of your demonic worship and see what god does with that i was invited to a satanic ritual and i'm not going i made it clear they will go together my older sister is here today she's going to in the morning wake up and go with my younger sister to tladisowit i will be the only one that is not there i will be the only daughter that's not going there and they will do that little satanic ritual cackling around all over the show killing some innocent animal in the name of their god and i will not be there and they will nonetheless irrespective of me not being there they will mention me they will talk about me likely along the lines of karabo is a is is derelicted from us karabo is um hey guys i can even imagine what tablabona is gonna go something along the lines of mama kupa ori restore to karabo she is despondent karabo is despondent the karabo doesn't want to be among family anymore oh we isolate she's isolated herself she's no longer a part of us guys yo offendedness yes well like just insult insult just a, a grief in heaven and on earth like saying they don't know what's wrong with me i've been withdrawn and it's been a decade now 10 years ago i was complaining there's something that she's holding on to like yeah yes like it how are you gonna go patronize even ancestors with that prayer I mean, our ancestors not like God, right? You think they're God. So uh, don't they have like an omnipresence about them? Don't they know what's the truth? So how are you going to go and just feel like saying, there's always some severity and pray about a person in the name of a lie. Why is it mad? So Grandshop, you're even offending, even if ancestral worship was true. You're offending. You're offending. You're offending. You're offending. Everybody in Jefela, you are offending them. By, by lying about someone that since they're God, they must be omnipresent. And so they know that person is innocent. And my ancestors, if it all was a whole thing, would probably tell my mother to f- b- apologize to me. I'm innocent. If at all ancestors were a thing, they would all have uh, a bone to pick. Nah, bo- so all of this is a charade. Like we're thinking they are playing games. They are playing games with a person's life enough to a point of literally deceiving themselves each other, lying to each other. They must know that there are no gods. 
because they are lying to their gods as they pray to them if at all they truly had any reverence even for their ancestors they would not pray the kind the kinds of blasphemous prayers that they're about to take up to those ancestors Gaussan. I'm withdrawn because you clubbed together against me. Your ancestors should rather kick you down than lightning strike. They should be sending down my lightning bolts to you all because you are literally blaspheming them as you pray these wicked prayers. That's an nit. No one loves truth anymore. I'm not trying to goodness or so because people don't love truth. The world is over. Please. Let them go and pray in the name of a saint. Let them go. Let them go and pray in the name of Ukarabo. Sizake le songwa na amban. Balande ni la ma ancestors wey nyo nyo tanyo nyo nyo tagata. Umuntu onga tagategi because really frankly I have no toga pela ganna. Koma ancestors ngwang lawyer on that day are you not? We angi tagata. You're asking for my ancestors to mold my destiny. Bakupa malozaba no rato mold that destiny ya guy. Yazen. Zamang long lawyer do you? Tomorrow I'm going to go and get bewitched again as if though I've, I have not had enough of these satanic rituals done against me. But this time around instead of it being in secret, but long lawyer publicly. That's what you do when you consult Namasangoma and ask them petition them for stuff. You are bewitching people like it. So Janu Halalo Rapella the ancestors on behalf of a person. Niam Tagat. You are asking demons to basically intervene in the life of a person. You are asking a person to be bewitched. So I mean I gotta just sit lang Khizikon and wait for my mom and my uncle and my cousins Wonkumuntu to do what they've been doing all these ten years. Guys, at least this time around I was given the courtesy of understanding At least this time around is not anonymous. This time around Bang Jalile 99. A tried to get me to partake in that satanic ritual and got me I'm in the center of a seance. Kahana. But despite Ugu Wala Loku, eh, Bazongi Tagata Mara this time Nazi. But long lawyer get zeba. Kausan and Naga is a good lawyer get zeba. Gas Saturday, the 2nd of December 2023. Karawa Lomu lawyer at zeba. What about Zimur Mumumumumumuna? Acha. Abba Babula Gigi hit. Yeah. Yes, um, while my family is busy bewitching me from Tladi Soet, Ramban, no one get tagata vievie. Do it. This time around, having confessed all oh, that's what you're doing. When I tell you, like my cousin, Lena Kiaka Nanza is an incantation in Mosaiting, who lost a little fire in Yoka Kadiling. Eh, Ramban, keep on bewitching me while I pray and fast and get weak and have to overcome your nonsense, but I will keep on demolishing your arguments and every lofty pretension that exalts itself above the Most High and hold into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. I am holding fast to my guns. There is no moving left or right. I'm banning South Africa to hell. Go to hell you want it. Black people, I'm banning. Keep black ass like it. How many of you are dying every single day and finding yourself in hell after speaking like my former colleague, saying Uwuti, God understands. You are landing in hellfire every single day. Because you are literally mixing God with this demonic stuff. This is what a true saint looks like. So Mizi Aga Tokafala, he will go to hell right now. Albeit having advised his daughter, do you understand? That she will eventually capitulate to 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 what's this to uh to Madlozi. Unless so Mizi repents, oh yeah di heling. Because um mixa bozalwane, lentra yetang. Unless every one of you give your lives to Christ truly, little hele, gabo satani bobalona, this instant gratification. God has given you the fruit of the Holy Spirit. If at all you will give your lives to him, to give you long suffering and patience. Horo eme, how sa tolemo sebetika twenty twenty three ota okra twenty twenty four. Emela mudim, stop fast tracking your own progress along because what does a prophet a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul? Loya di hele ng inta lipi zliti fast tracka, liti keta di CEO. Even though you're not skilled enough for the job, you're making yourself senior managers. You're making yourselves get married to men and women that have not signed up for you. Cause oba just take a korobel. You are making yourself stay with people in relationships that don't wanna be with you because oba to be sitting pega mina pel. Maro ibi zanza loan. Kasa nde you're going to church with the same boyfriend. Omo forcing ngora du lelwen. Eya maro you expect to ralega ikena ko car accident thing on the way back from church. Where now we are mahodi mo? Why? Cause it's let's walk here again. Let's walk here again. Maga chuse ono li pizun toje sangu na bat. I sorry guys. Libala, you can forget it. You're going to hell. Go for a local party, Lord. Do you understand? The lipizi le rape la kaba zaluani. Come and save it, sing. You are literally doing the prophets or king a the ritual yet the prophets of Baal. Like my cousin who came to my house and came and like my demoni the way now to be like a thing. Eh, I like the nine to ask to ring and ask some animal that helped predict her pregnancy, like that freaking octopus. Yeah, the World Cup year 2010. Continue to believe in stuff like that. Go on with your horoscopes. I'm banning with your astrology, with your interpreting of omens, with you cutting up animals in the name of whatever god you want to roam with. I'm banning. Do you? 
continue to subjugate a creation to the futility of your many gods, your polytheism. Do it. Tsamayang, lo rabelang di rosa ri tsalona. Tsamayang lona hana hore modimo has your back cause na le mosebetsi and then o bo tlhokafala. O khutla from Kerek. And on only busy o release the crocodile tears ulla. Ka praise and worship because you felt all blessed and highly favored by Mudimu that told you depart from me work of iniquity as soon as o tlhokafala. Go car accidenting back from church. O tswa kerekeng o ntse o lla di crocodile tears mara o ile di heleng jwang. Yeah, I'll tell you how. Onzo li busy ka gozar. Onzo li busy. Onzo eti mula di nefi in the name of Satan Walun. Li busy nzo li attenda me sebeti for crying out loud. Li pizza bazalwan. For what? For who? And then li busy observing the the slaughtering of animals that are groaning to see the sons of God revealed. And you're sitting where you're sitting. Gom sebeti ngwate. That's what's good. Without leaving. And no wo jali na maya te. Hey, kleba tu. Has zona nongo toka fala go haxe go ka accidenting and you find yourself in hell. Understand you had it coming. You cannot serve two masters. No one can. Jonong, if your life is made uncomfortable, do you understand? By your choice or your stance for Jesus Christ, that's what you must take in your stride. God tells you to take up your cross and follow him daily, daily. Do you understand? The world hates disciples. From now on a man, people are going to persecute you thinking they're doing a service to God. Here it is that my family is persecuting me thinking they're doing a service to God in heaven and also there are many gods, their ancestors. They think they're doing a service to God. Hambani, guys. So it's what I'm Continue to test the Lord your God. Living in a country where literally 70% of black people who call themselves Christians are not. You're not Christian. Because they're busy. How in the world you gonna have a Christian sit you down and tell you that they're Christian? And then a world by invite that to a satanic ritual. You might as well have your girl that just that's just become vegan and is now vegan for like a year or something. You might as well invite them to carnivore. Is that basic? That's the level of disrespect. That's the level of disrespect. Some of us are already gain. Do you understand? Because we're truly saved. The Lord gave us true redemption. That's what's good. What do police say? I remove the scales off our eyes. Chesa, go and read the Acts of the Apostles. Goodness gracious, what in the world is going on with you? Where's the Lankaluna? Go and read the Acts of the Apostles. Those new converts. But they are all of their magicians' books, their spell casting books, and their omens and their funny little witchcraft paraphernalia, and they put it in a bonfire and burned it. That's what you should do when you give your life to Jesus. You should not be holding on to one ancestor or two because you've seen them work for you before. On that day, how about You have not been surrendered. If you can't do what the early church did upon getting born again and throwing away their witchcraft paraphernalia, their astrology books, their witchcraft books, all these things, if at all you have not done that, how mzalwan? You are not saved. You are not saved. My whole family, my pizza mzalwan. If I had agreed to go to that abominable ceremony, they were probably going to ask me to open in prayer because I'm the strongest in Zalwani, mixing it, of course, with ancestral worship. In the name of Jesus, following which they're going to pray to ancestors. Rabbi Shinjafel, of mixing all different kinds of things together. You are very patchwork, Nje. Patchwork all over the show. It's made up of all different kinds of materials. There's nothing solid. One uniform thought. If you believe everything, you will stand for everything. If you stand for nothing, you will believe everything. You will fall for everything. If you stand for nothing, you will fall for everything. It's written in God's word that these people literally gather for themselves a great number of teachers to teach them what their itching ears want to hear. That they will be swayed to and from by every wind of doctrine. That these people, because when they pray to God, they don't believe that they're going to get what they ask for in prayer. They are unstable in all their ways and shouldn't expect that they're going to get anything. That's what's going on. That's going to go nowhere. An abomination to Emmanuel, a stench up his nostrils. On top of that, that's what it is. When you are praying to necromancy. That's what it is. When you are praying to ancestors, Marli busy gabon. La talk of fala going to hell in your numbers every single day. Ba 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 mullo. Mara not before you first think you're going to heaven. Mwaka omo tona hale mukana. She's old. She is too old to be continuing with this rubbish. She is literally too old. Any minute now she could pass away from any manner of complications and find herself in the worst part of hell. Worst part of hell. And yet she's continuing in the stead. I mean, that's the only one who's going to be able to convince her that she's not going to be able to Old habits die hard. Who in the world is going to evangelize that woman successfully? The only thing that I can think about is the rapture. It'll show her that ancestors were, were, were worthless. But if the rapture doesn't happen, this woman is inevitably going to die and go to hell. And she's going to go to the worst part of hell. The way Aradang peanut butter got done. The way Aradan comfort got done, I get to be able to talk about it. I, I, I seriously don't know. She likes comfort. How do you bottle it? She sang. What are we doing? We're somewhere in a bubble bath. Who in the world is going to survive hell? Agata luxury hagal. Agata luxury hagal. Eh, but you, but you give me bad feeling. Eh, young, Marana. Go back to the car. I got to tap along and I said body ling. Go miss a bit thing. Let's go mention. Let's get on board. Don't do it. Like, do not disrespect me by calling a vegan to a carnival fest. That's exactly what you're doing. Lost my aid. 
it's okay. Some of us will hold on to the truth and that remnant will get raptured. Guys. At this point, there's nothing to be fixed. He'll just take us home. I'm done. Like, I am thoroughly done. I'm exhausted with the black community and I'm exhausted with the lies of the world. But then again, who isn't, if at all, they're truly of God? The remnant are reeling. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Cran K. Bye.